then there's another type of conflict and that's the stockholder debt holder conflict this one comes about because debt holders are in terms of what they receive those coupon interest payments for loaning the firm money that's usually fixed if they said they're gonna receive 5% coupon payment that's fixed for 20 years or however long the loan goes and so if the firm does better then the bondholders or debt holders they don't get any extra benefit they still get their 5% coupon payment however stockholders if the firm does better they can get special dividends or increases in dividends to where they get to enjoy the prosperity of the firm so the conflict arises because the stockholders might be more for taking on riskier projects so that they can get a potentially greater dividend or greater stock price appreciation whereas that puts the bondholders at risk because they've loaned the company money and they are hoping to get their coupon payments their interest payments and they're also hoping to receive the principal amount of the money that they loaned them the company back at the time to maturity so some things that bondholders can do and one thing that well they're also concerned about the use of additional debt because the more debt a firm takes on the more likely it is to not be able to pay all of its debt payments just like it is for an individual if you keep on taking more debt you're more likely to go bankrupt but bondholders can also try to do things to protect themselves by including these things called covenants and bond agreements and they can say you can't issue more than this amount of debt after my debt um, and usually the people that are loaning the money to the firms are like large institutional investors and not necessarily little individuals like us and so the large institutional investors have a lot of clout in terms of this situation and they can also include a covenant in their bond saying that that dividends are restricted so that dividend more dividends can't be paid and so that would reduce the whole issue with the stockholders trying to take on riskier projects or want riskier projects so they they could get higher dividends so we know the goal of management is to maximize stock price when we think about the idea of how managers are always trying to value asset or projects in terms of the present value of the cash flow streams that it's providing and then all of the important decisions are made on that net present value there's something else that comes along and that's the whole societal interest piece or corporate philanthropy and being socially responsible also means that a company is not damaging the environment or doing things that harm people all of that has to be taken into account so they have kind of to balance these two things where they need to maximize share price which is based on hard concrete numbers and also being seen by the public as being socially responsible well the costs of being socially responsible don't really match up with shareholder value always and for an example corporate philanthropy is also it's always like a complicated issue because it can be justified in terms of helping to create a more attractive community that will make it easier to hire um, a productive workforce and this corporate philanthropy idea could be received by stockholders negatively especially the stockholders that don't live in the headquarters city um, stockholders are interested in actions that maximize share price and if competing firms are not making similar contributions then the cost of this philanthropy has to be borne by someone and that ends up being the stockholders so the stock price could decrease because of this